Overall, I really enjoyed Resident Evil Village, and I can see why people have it as their game of the year for 2021. Having said that, I wouldn't call it my game of the year. The game is horrifying, suspenseful, and full of surprises whether it be in the form of a new enemy type or plotline. The gameplay is fun, combat is challenging and engaging, and the story is solid. What makes Resident Evil Village truly brilliant is its ability to turn survival horror into a balanced experience that is fun and empowering while making sure you are still feeling scared and vulnerable. No matter what weapons and ammo you have, you never truly feel invincible or safe. Resident Evil Village continues the story from Resident Evil Biohazard where you play as Ethan Winters. Ethan and his wife Mia Winters are raising their daughter Rosemary in Europe after being relocated by the Umbrella Corporation following the events of Resident Evil Biohazard. One night while eating dinner, the very same Umbrella Corporation kidnaps the entire family. Ethan wakes up in a daze in the middle of a cold, wintry wasteland and finds that his daughter is missing. Ethan navigates his way to a village where he suspects his daughter is being held in captivity, but to save her, he has to take down the otherworldly Mother Miranda and co and survive the nightmare that is happening in this village. Resident Evil Village's narrative is well constructed and adequately tells the story at hand, but it does nothing to stand out. The story told entails a father who will stop at nothing to save his family. It's a fundamental synopsis seen time and time again. Resident Evil Village does superbly in taking that fundamental synopsis and tailoring it to the game's tone and atmosphere. The circumstances around Ethan's daughter are surprisingly dark, complex, and up the stakes of the game. In short, the circumstances within the synopsis perfectly fit the game. However, the story in of itself does not beg more interesting questions surrounding the conversation of family, what it means to people, and what lengths they'll go to save it. Resident Evil Village uses a vast array of unique environments to create a stellar horror experience. In this roughly 10 hour journey, you encounter multiple members of Mother Miranda's family, each with a unique home. These homes range from a medieval open castle complete with dungeons and torchlight to small, cramped houses with horrifying dark basements and deep wells. Each of these environments has a unique identity that not only make the experience fresh, but also excel at making you feel unsettled. You'll find yourself in the dark against enemies you've never seen in your wildest dreams, or maybe you have, I don't judge, or pitted against supernatural vampires that could appear in any hallway in a medieval castle at any moment. What all these situations have in common are a fear of the unknown that is created with subtle elements like the dark, cramped spaces, deep pits, and even more surprises. Everything you can think of that will make you feel uncomfortable has been put into this game and then some. This creates a unique tone that is extremely effective and will keep you feeling fearful at all times. Aside from feeling fearful at all times, fortunately, Resident Evil Village provides you with an exciting weapons arsenal to fight back. The arsenal consists of nearly a dozen unlockable weapons that are progressively more powerful or advantageous than its predecessor. Between pistols, knives, shotguns, grenade launchers, and sniper rifles, you have a familiar yet diverse set to choose from. This is great from a variety perspective on account of being able to choose your weapon to fit the current situation in combat. Given the vast array of environments and enemies, you will need different tools. The arsenal at your disposal is supreme at fulfilling those needs whether you need a long-range precision sniper rifle or a grenade launcher or shotgun to mow down everything in your path. However, this is extremely frustrating from a customization standpoint. Throughout the game, you're able to purchase power-ups or upgrades for each of your weapons. It serves as a nice way to get a leg up on your enemies, but just when you are close to fully upgrading each respective weapon, a more powerful version of it is unlocked in-game. These more powerful versions are better in every facet out of the gate than the previous iteration at its peak. Meaning, you can upgrade your previous pistol to its peak in every way. Just when you finish upgrading that pistol and spending thousands of Lee on it, that's the in-game currency, you will unlock a more powerful pistol that renders the previous iteration useless, which can leave your investment high and dry. This poses the conundrum of when and how to spend the Lee in-game, which can get increasingly frustrating. I wanted to be able to reap the benefits of the thousands of Lee I earned from defeating enemies, but felt like the game was punishing me when I chose to spend it on weapon upgrades. The diversity in enemy types in Resident Evil Village is one of its most profound strengths. Throughout my experience, I encountered four distinct bosses, several enemy types that included Lycans, Soldats, Samka, Maraka, Haulers, and others. Each required a different approach and style to defeat or get around, which brought plenty of variety to gameplay. I rarely approached an enemy in the same manner twice, which kept me thinking and on my toes. If I managed to get through a particularly long sequence or ambush, it felt like a major accomplishment given the grit needed to succeed. The amount of creativity and novelty that these enemies bring to the experience is truly felt and enhanced my appreciation for both combat and the game as a whole. Hunting and recipe crafting is included in Resident Evil Village and feels like a natural and fitting addition. In your gameplay experience, you're able to hunt down game and wild animals spanning from poultry, fish, 
juicy game, meat, and others. These can be used at the merchant shop to craft particular dishes that serve as upgrades for Ethan, whether it be health boosts or damage reduction. This felt like another creative way to up your chances in challenging combat and provided another avenue to change up gameplay from what you become accustomed to seeing. Having said that, the resources to hunt can become increasingly scarce and rare as the game gets to the later stages. These recipes are excellent and appealing, but if you don't take advantage of every opportunity throughout the game to capture the required ingredients, you might never achieve them. It makes the game walk a dangerous line to where resource collection can become a distraction rather than a rewarding supplement. If you're focused on keeping your eyes peeled for a game to hunt, it detracts from the stronger aspects of Resident Evil Village aforementioned. Friends, in the end, Resident Evil Village was epic. The experience provided walks a balanced line to where it feels more like a survival horror game and less like an action game, which is where the franchise is at its best. The environment succeeded in being unsettling, the combat's exciting and novel between a powerful arsenal and diverse enemy types, and the story is solid, but not groundbreaking by any means. I've never had an experience quite like this that made me feel so powerful and confident, but frightened and scared all at the same time. Resident Evil Village is worthy of a 9 out of 10. It's amazing, and I can't recommend it enough. Cool. Friends, have you played Resident Evil Village? Village. What'd you think of it? You know where the comment section is. Let me know. Thanks so much for watching another Banker Pippo game review. If you like this, click right here if you'd like to see more. I've been Bryson. Until next time, have a great day.